Hi everyone. I wanted to make a video about pastel brands because I'm hoping that you will find that useful. So in this video, I'm going to go over the brands that I've got and tell you a little bit about the characteristics of each brand. Obviously, I don't have all the brands in the world, but I've got a nice selection and it might give you some idea about which pastel brands might suit you best. So let's get started. Now, one of my favorite pastel brands are Rembrandt pastels. I've got, I've got quite a tray full here of Rembrandt pastels, if you can see that. And they are really very suitable for, they are really very suitable for anything you want to paint. Rembrandt pastels are not the softest of pastels. They're not the hardest of pastels. They're right in the middle. So they're sort of medium soft or medium hard. On top of that, they're also right in the middle when it comes to cost. They're not hugely expensive and they're not the cheapest of the cheap. Again, they are right in the middle. And I think that makes them the perfect all round pastel. They are professional quality, so they are good enough for anybody who is serious about their pastel work. They are also suitable for beginners who want to work with good or the best materials. So I love Rembrandt pastels for that alone. Now also because they're not too soft and not too hard, they sort of pick from the best of both worlds. They are hard enough to be able to make sharp lines and, and clear marks. And because they're not too soft, you can layer quite a lot of pastel onto a decent toothy pastel paper. With a very soft pastel, very often the tooth is full after one big fat stroke. But with Rembrandt pastels, because they're not that soft, you can layer multiple pastel layers over each other. And so you can mix colors, you can deepen colors, you can go over your mistakes, etc. So they're really versatile like that. I love hatching and I like layering my pastels over each other and so create color transitions and subtle transitions in value. Rembrandt pastels are perfect for that because I can layer on and on and on with these pastels, which is something that I cannot do with the softest of the pastels. Rembrandt pastels come in a range of around 220, I think, colors. So it's not a massive range but it's a good range. They have a nice selection of colors and you, you can find all the colors that you need there, absolutely. They have a policy of not putting any heavy metals in their pastels, so you won't find any cadmium or cobalt colors in that range, which might be a benefit if you are uh, keen to avoid hazardous materials, but it might also be something you might not like so much because it does mean it doesn't have the vibrant cadmium reds, for example, in its collection. It has alternative reds, which I think are absolutely fine and absolutely vibrant, but it's something you might have to decide for yourself. So Rembrandt pastels are one of my favorite pastels for sure. Now, the next pastel I'd like to show you is Unison pastels. Here is a dirty box. I think this is an animal collection. And this is a midnight set. So these are a load of dark blues, which are really, really beautiful. So Unison pastels are, um, obviously these are half sticks by the way, and these are full sticks. So just to show you. Unison pastels are much softer than Rembrandt pastel. They are not the softest of the soft, but they are pretty soft, if you know what I mean. And they, stand out in particular because I think of their beautiful colors. You really notice that the pigment density in these pastels is really high. And you, you just notice that the colors just have more depth, more richness. I mean, it doesn't mean that, you know, all their colors are really bright and really lush because they also have the most subtle earth tones and gray tones and greens. And I really love them for that because my work has a lot of you know, tonal work and subtle greys. So these are absolutely beautiful for that. They are slightly more expensive than Rembrandt pastels, but like I said, you do get that back in the beauty of the pigments used. 
Unison pastels are made in the UK by hand and they are absolutely fantastic quality and very much recommended for anybody who wants to use proper soft pastels. They layer beautifully, they mix beautifully, they are on the softer side so you can't endlessly layer over it but you can get quite far with these pastels and um, they also they have a really nice consistency to them. All the colours um, work the same, all the colours behave the same, there's no grittiness, it's not like one colour is softer or smoother than the other, they all are really even and very very nice to work with really. The next lot I'd like to show you is Sennelier. I've got a, um, a box of the portrait selection which is here. I know I need to clean them but I've just been working with them so they do look a little bit yucky but you know that's what it looks like in real life. So this is the Sennelier portrait selection. I think I've put them all back. There's one missing there. I'm not sure that's a Sennelier. It might be. Yeah, I think so. But uh, Sennelier are world famous for their soft pastels and they are fabulous, fabulous quality, fabulous colour and they are one of the softest pastels out there. You will really, really notice the difference between Sennelier and for example Rembrandt pastels. The difference is huge. A Sennelier pastel glides onto your paper like butter. It's very lush, it's very beautiful and it comes much closer to working with actual paint like oil paint because it's so buttery and so lush. The colours as well are very rich, very highly pigmented and so when you put a stroke down of, I don't know, of a bright red or a cadmium red, you really see an explosion of colour. But the same applies to the more subtle colours. They are really, you know, thick and creamy. So again, these are so soft that they're not really suitable for endlessly layering and, and subtle transitions and tiny little details because the sticks lay down a fat and wide mark. But they are really suitable, of course, for more expressive works, for colour work and for, you know, for bold areas and things like that. I mean, it really depends on your own technique, of course, what you can do with it. But Sennelier pastels are so soft, lush and make big, wide, fat marks that a lot of people will use them for quite impressionistic work. So beautiful colours, highly recommended, professional quality. Not the cheapest, but you know, you get what you pay for. I've got uh, a small box of Terry Ludwig pastels. Now I bought these not too long ago and I've been tr wanting to try these for years because in America so many people love these pastels. For a long time they were not available in the UK or in Europe at all but Jackson's do stock them now so I treated myself to a small box. Um, I think it's called the, ba uh, yeah, it's the basics box and I was pleasantly surprised what a lovely set you get. The colours for a basic set are quite subtle. I mean you get sort of the primaries but not quite. I mean that's an ochre yellow so there's no basic uh, primary yellow and that's like a sky blue so there's no basic blue. So as a starter set it's an interesting choice but it suits me really well because the colours again are quite toned down, they're sort of earthy colours and grey tones. So for me this was beautiful. As you can see these sticks are square while all the other ones I've shown you so far they were round. These ones are square which is quite useful because you can have you have more places to create sharp lines and things like that but you know after use no doubt they will just end up round and chunky anyway. So very, very nice pastels, high quality, lots of pigment in it. I did notice that they create a bit, a bit more dust than some of the other pastels, so they're a little dusty, but the quality is fantastic. They are a little bit less soft, I wouldn't say harder, but a little bit less soft than Sennelier. I think Sennelier is the soft of, softest of them all. And I think they're a tiny bit softer than the Unison pastels. 
So in Hartness, you would now have Rembrandt, which is, is like in between. It's, a, it's much harder than this. You have Rembrandt, then Unison, then Terry Ludwig, and then Sennelier at the end. I think the softest of the softest pastel would be Schmincke. The Schmincke pastels are super soft, super buttery, and super beautiful. So, yeah, I think that would be sort of the range. Well, I didn't mention about the, um, the Sennelier pastels, by the way, is that the consistency is not as good as some of the other brands I've mentioned. Um, for example, uh, the blues and the blacks sometimes have a bit of grit in them, which is not great. And they have like hard, hard bits in them that, um, yeah, that really stop you from painting the way you want to paint. So I found that a bit of a downside. I assume that's because of the pigment and they've just, you know, they're actually using pure pigment and the blue pigment is just a bit grittier than the yellow pigment. pigment. I assume it's down to that, but it's just not as nice to work with than, for example, with the Unisons or with the Terry Ludwigs that are all really consistent in their texture. So these are all the sort of best quality pastels range. Um, these are a couple more like student range, so I'll show you these as well. Um, I think a lot of people have heard of inscribed pastels. Um, they are very affordable. You can buy them at most news agents. And these are good if you really are completely new to art and you're completely new to pastel painting because they are cheap and um, they do their job. The, the colours are quite loud, as you can see. Um, but, you know, they do the job. They're not horrible, they blend well, they make nice marks. They've got a good, nice, small shape, so you can use them flat or on their edge. And for beginners or students, I would absolutely recommend these. But if you can afford better, go better. For example, if you can afford better, go better. Faber and Castell is just one step up from the most basic. Again, these are harder pastels. Um, so these are much harder than the inscribed ones. Um, and square so they're quite easy to use because they're hard pastels so these will be much harder than the Rembrandts I've shown you before colors are good the brand is good is good these are easy to use you can take them to classes and workshops because they're hard pastels and they won't break so easily so um yeah these are really just useful pastels for general practice work same story also good for classes, workshops, um, general practice. This is, um, I don't know how to pronounce it really. Krita color, Krita color. I'm not quite sure how to say it. And uh, these are hard pastels, as you can see. Um, it's got a really nice range of colors, actually. I really like this box um, because as you can see, the colors are messed up. They're not in the order they came in, um, but there's a lot of pinks and grays and earth tones which I really, really appreciate. So um, this, is, this is a really nice box. But again, they won't guarantee endless light fastness and that sort of thing. So it's, it's great for studies and all of that, but not so for, you know, proper gallery work and high priced works that you want to sell, for example. The last one I wanted to show you is a, a hard pastel as well. So they're sort of in the same range as this, but they are of a much better quality. And that's these Faber and Castell. Oh, I can't really show you because they're all going to fall out. Uh, Polychromos, if that's how you pronounce it, pastels. And these are absolutely lovely. I've bought them fairly recently, but I'm using them all the time. I'm really enjoying them. So these are a proper hard pastel um, and they are square shaped as you can see like these but they are of excellent quality they give a really good color and with these heart pastels you can make really fine detail you can really layer over each other almost endlessly if you've got a good paper mm -hmm. so they're very versatile it's a nice range of color in that box so i would highly recommend these as well those are really a step up from creta color or these uh, Faber and Castles or the Inscribe, definitely. So, um, Polychromos Pastels, 
I can really recommend. I've been using them a lot and I've, I've actually been moving towards hard pastels a little bit more than, than in the past. In the past, you sort of tend to work, a lot of pastel artists start with harder pastels and they work towards um, soft pastels because softer pastels can be a bit harder to work with. But um, I've sort of gone the other way around. I don't know. I'm, I'm really enjoying these hard pastels now and I'm using the, the Sennelier maybe a little bit less. But um, each to their own, I suppose. Maybe I'll get back to the, the really soft pastels at another stage again. Just try and play around. So, uh, so these are the pastels that I've just been mentioning. Quite a few brands, but overall, I think you, can, you need to look out for the hardness of pastel and that has something to do with what you can do with it. So if you want fine detail and you'd like to layer pastel strokes over each other to, for example, change and mix colours or, you know, you want to change the value, you want to go darker, a little bit lighter. If you want to layer your pastels and make these subtle transitions, then harder pastels are your friends. So think of Rembrandt, think of Polychromos, maybe Unisons as well. If you like more impressionistic or maybe even expressionistic paintings and it's about mark making and bold color and, you know, statements like that. And you like to simplify things and suggest and all of that, then maybe the soft pastels are better for you. So then think of Sennelier, think of Schmincke, um, think of Terry Ludwig um, and Unison as well, of course. So it sort of depends where you want to go. If you're a complete beginner to art and pastel and you really just want to practice and it's not about creating masterpieces or even selling it or exhibiting it, you really just want to explore and you're completely new to this, then these pastels are your friend. Try Criticolor, try Inscribe, whatever you can afford, of course. I would always say buy the best you can afford. So if you can afford, if you're a beginner and you can afford the better quality pastels, then just go for it. But obviously there's no point in painting with gold if you're going to end up throwing your drawings in the bin because they were just practice pieces. So be sensible about how much money you spend because pastels are addictive and you will end up wanting more and more and more. Hope this was useful. Hope you enjoyed it. If you got any questions, just leave them down below in the comments and um, I'll see you in the next video.